Hey guys, so today I want to introduce to you guys a new guitar amp that I just bought. So this is the Quilter Overdrive 202 and it's made by a company called Quilter, uh, which is a, um, this is a US company that's based in California and uh, they make these solid state amps that supposedly they sound really good, like very close to a tube amp, uh, which really intrigued me because uh, I usually play tube amps. I think me, just like many guitarists, we prefer the sound of tube amps because they sound really good. The overdrive especially sounds very natural on a tube amp um, compared to a regular solid state amp. But this one, uh, the Quilter amps, um, from what I've read online, like all the reviews and everyone, says that Quilter amps sound very, very close to a tube amp. So it just kind of got me intrigued because, you know, I love tube amps, but the thing is they have a lot of drawbacks. Tube amps are very heavy. They're usually very heavy, um, hard to carry. Uh, you have to lug the thing around and then it's high maintenance as well because there are tubes in it, right? And tubes are very fragile things. So yeah, um, I would love to be able to have the sound of a tube amp without having to actually carry around a tube amp. Yeah, so I think that's why these days you see a lot of people using like modeling amps or they use like um, the Kemper, right? Like uh, different like modelers um, or they use um, like solid state amps like Quilter which have really stepped up their game. Um, I think DV Mark is another one that's pretty popular, Fender Tone Master, right? Uh, and then these all these like preamp pedals that people are building now. So I think solid state technology has come a long way. Um, the last uh, solid state amp that I used um, Actually, it's the Vox Mini. Is the Vox Mini Five that I have? But I mean, the the last like I guess full power solid state amp that I used uh, was probably back in high school, um, and I played a Vox amp back then. That was kind of like a hybrid solid state amp. I think it was a Valtronics. But even then, that's not like a full solid state amp. It's like a hybrid one where they have like a tube in the preamp section to make it sound more tube. So, anyways. Um, amp companies have been trying to make solid state amps that sound like tube amps for, for decades now. I remember when I was in high school, yeah, like Vox Valtronics is a good example. Like they were trying to make, um, like a lot of companies were trying to make solid state amps sound more, more like tube amps because, you know, the, people know that tube amps are like the gold standard of tone. So that most guitarists prefer tube amps and the sound of the tube amps are very natural, very warm, very organic, uh, especially for the overdrive and distortion. So uh, previously I did a video on the Vox MV50. So this is actually a, uh, this is really a tube amp. Um, it's just not using traditional tubes. This is using a Korg new tube technology. Um, so I guess you can think of it as a hybrid or even just a, yeah, a new tube type of amp. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is not like a traditional tube amp, but I do think that solid state technology has come a long way. Um, and I really do like the sound of the Vox MV50. So I thought, Okay, solid state amps have come along a lot. Uh, so I decided to give the Quilter a try. I saw this one online and, uh, you know, I like the sound of it just from the YouTube demos, but I think it's up to me right, when I actually play it for myself to, uh, to hear what it actually sounds like. Uh, but just to give you guys an overview of this amp, so this costs $700 US. It is not a cheap amp. Um, for, especially for a solid state amp, this is quite expensive. Um, but we'll see if the tone is actually worth the price, right? It's pretty light. It's four pounds. And uh, that's one of the major advantages of solid state amps is that they're pretty light. And uh, the other advantage is that they're easy to maintain. Uh, you don't have any tubes to maintain. Um, and yes, yeah, it's, it's very uh, light and portable. So I'm just going to go over um, the specs of this uh, amp here. So the Overdrive 202 is uh, their model that has a built-in overdrive section. So it has two channels, a clean channel, overdrive channel. If you want one with just a clean channel, they make one called the Reverb 50, I think. The Reverb 50 is also low wattage. Uh, it's like um, 50 watts, I believe. This one is 200 watts, um, but that one is substantially cheaper by $200. So that one's like 500 bucks, but 50 watts and you only get a clean channel. This one, you get an overdrive channel in addition to clean channel and it's 200 watts and this was $200 more expensive so $700. Um, so let's go over the uh, different controls here. Uh, so you have a power switch right here. Um, you have the power which is basically this is essentially an attenuator or the master volume is what they call it but it looks almost like an attenuator because it goes from zero watts all the way up to 200 watts here you can kind of adjust that. Um, I'm probably going to leave it at 50 because I'm playing in an apartment right now. I don't really need the full 200 watts, but you have full 200 watts on tap here. Um, probably just going to leave it probably not past 50. Uh, you have a built-in reverb section right here. Um, I have to test it to see how good it sounds, but apparently this reverb is placed uh, post effects loop. 
Uh, so yeah, it should sound pretty good. Um, not sure what kind of reverb it's based on. I'm guessing spring reverb. Um, then you have uh, the clean channel and the overdrive channel sections right here. So clean channel section has the gain, um, which is kind of, you know, a little bit weird because it's a clean channel, but this clean channel does have a, a gain stage as well. It's just not going to be as much as the overdrive channel, of course, but you do have a bit of gain on the clean channel if you need a bit of grit. Uh, then it has a three band EQ. So you have your bass, your mids, and your treble here. Then for the overdrive section, um, you have the gain right here. And uh, this is actually a button here that kind of controls the uh, overdrive section. Um, you can actually buy a foot switch from uh, Quilter as well because this is uh, obviously not ideal to control it from here. Uh, you want to be able to have a foot switch if you're actually going to be performing live in a gig, right? Uh, easy to switch between the two channels, but it doesn't come with a foot switch, you have to buy that separately. But anyways, overdrive channel has a gain channel, gain stage, of course, so you control that gain here. Uh, has a limiter. Uh, this limiter is sort of like a compressor, I guess, uh, that kind of controls, um, the, basically it limits, right, uh, the power of, uh, of this gain stage here. So essentially, yeah, it's almost like a, it's almost like a compressor, I think. Uh, then this output level, this is basically the level of the output. Uh, it's placed, I think, before the master volume. So this is gonna, this is essentially just the volume for this overdrive channel. And this, the master volume is the, or the attenuator is actually right here. Um, so yeah, that's the overdrive channel. And this gain channel overrides the clean channel. Um, and then you have the uh, voicing right here. So there's three voices. What I've been told from the manual is that uh, there's three different voices here. Um, each of these voices are uh, a bit interesting. So the first one is a flat EQ. So it's just the sound of your guitar with no other kind of adjustments or anything. So the first one is flat. The second one, supposedly they call it a bell-like tone. And let me just paraphrase it from the, um, from the manual right here. So yeah, the, the first one is called a flat, honest voice, similar to many early amps with some added treble sparkle for improved definition. Uh, the second voicing is a bell-like tone that emphasizes the presence harmonics. And the third channel is a classic metallic voicing with lots of oomph and in the incisive highs, delivering the classic ripping guitar sound. So uh, from what it says here, the third channel, or the third voice is, um, is like a higher gain channel. But uh, actually, it's a little bit odd because, okay, this is what it says here, right, for the um, three channels, but then, Flipping over to the forward, it actually says the voice three is actually sounds more like a blackface, classic blackface mid scoop. So I wonder what that actually is. So the voice three, is that gonna be like a blackface type of fender sound, but with like higher gain or something like that? I'm not sure. I, I'm gonna test that out later, of course. Uh, so you can kind of switch it like this. This is just like a little switch here. Um, and then you have your input for your guitar, of course. You have your FX loop here. So it does have an FX loop. You have a send and return right here. Uh, which all go before the reverb. Yeah, then you have a signal out here, and the signal out can be adjusted uh, either with line level or headphone out. So it has a built-in headphone amplifier as well if you want to use your headphones. So yeah, you can either adjust it if you want to play uh, practice, you know, using your headphones, you can do a headphone, or you can just switch it to standard line out. Um, so yeah, that's it for the front. And on the back here, you just have uh, two little outputs for a four ohm speaker or eight ohm speaker. Um, I'm going to be using an 8-ohm speaker because I'll actually be using the cabinet for my Vox MV50 to, to, to try this out. I think that's a nice little pairing because this, um, this is a Vox BC108 extension cabinet, which is usually sold with the Vox MV50. Um, but in this case, I think the quilter fits really well. So I can just put my quilter on top of here and it actually fits really well. So I'm going to use the uh, Vox BC108 cabinet and speaker with the quilter. And by the way, this is not uh, the standard speaker that came with the cabinet. <laughs> so I showed in a previous video, I actually swapped out the speaker. Uh, it used to be some kind of Vox custom speaker and I swapped it out for a warehouse speaker's G8C. So it's it's uh, using a warehouse guitar speaker's G8C um, ceramic speaker right now. So yeah, um, this is an 8 ohm speaker. So I'll be using the 8 ohm. And then this is the RJ45 Ethernet jack, which you, uh, it's not really for Ethernet for this amp. It's actually used to connect the foot switch. So this is for the foot switch, which I do not have, uh, which is fine because I'm not going to be live gigging with this thing. I'll just be using it to practice at home. So anyways, uh, yeah, I thought this would be a good idea to pair the uh, Vox BC108 extension cabinet with the Quilter Overdrive uh, 202. And uh, we'll see how it sounds like. So uh, 
Yeah, I'll also do a demonstration. I'll just play from the Vox MV50. This is the Vox MV50 Boutique, uh, which is uh, modeled on the sound of the Dumbo amp, the legendary Dumbo amp. Um, so you guys can maybe hear a difference. This is a $250 amp, by the way. So yeah, so I'm going to do a comparison so you guys can hear um, the Vox MV50 Boutique, which is a $250 amp uh, that has a uh, Korg new tube inside of it. Um, and then I'm going to check out the uh, Quilter Overdrive 202, a $700 solid state amp. And uh, maybe compare the two and uh, see if this one really is worth the price. So yeah, pretty big price difference between these two. Um, they're both, I guess, solid state, even though this one does have a tube in, inside of it technically. But we'll see if there's any you know, big sonic differences between the two. And uh, we're going to use you know, the same cabinet and same speaker with them both. So yeah, stay tuned guys. Uh, I'm going to test out both of these. All right, first I'm going to play the Vox MV50 for a bit, um, so you guys can hear what that sounds like. Uh, I know I played it in uh, my previous video, but uh, for this video, yeah, so just so you guys know, this is a $250, I guess, hybrid amp, uh, since it has a cork new tube inside of it, and then, of course, some solid-state circuitry, I think. So, yeah, uh, let's check this one out. I'm going to use the Vox PC108 cabinet with it um, and yeah we're going to start it up so there we go uh, I'm gonna put all the settings gain tone I'm gonna take tone at around 12 o'clock volume at 12 o'clock and uh, let's just put gain around 12 o'clock just have all the settings at 12 o'clock there we go and so yeah this is what the Vox MV50 boutique sounds like and I have my Gresh Electromatic Center Block Junior with um, TV Jones Duotron pickups here, and I will be playing right now with both pickups on. Let's just start with, alright, here's what it sounds like. <laughs> Keep in mind this has no reverb, right, so it's just...
that's the MV50, the Vox MV50 Boutique uh, guitar head right now. I turn it all the way to the gain. Especially not this boutique version. Uh, there is a higher gain one. There's several different models of the MV50. This is just the the uh, boutique Dumble version. But there's also you know like the rock version, and um, I guess they have a high gain metal version that can go higher gain. But anyways, it's just a demo of what the Vox MV50 boutique sounds like. Now I want to switch over to the Quilter. Uh, so you guys have heard the MV50. This is a $250 hybrid guitar amp head, uh, 50 watts. And uh, yeah, I want to switch over to the Quilter now, which is a $700, um, this is a full solid state, uh, but 200 watts. I'm going to actually just put it at 50 though. Yeah, just put it at 50 because I don't want to like be too loud. So yeah, um, yeah, we're just going to put it here and it should connect. Just go through 8 ohms here. And uh, whoops, yeah, 8 ohms. Uh, let's put our input right here, and uh, I'm going to try the three different voices. Okay, I'm going to start over, start out at the flat voicing, and uh, yeah, turn it on right here. All right. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the Quilter Overdrive 202. Okay. <laughs> reverb on I think on this one. To dial down the reverb a little bit to turn up the treble. I'm just going to put treble mids and bass up to, I'm going to put treble, bass and mids up to five right in the middle and uh, gain up to, gain up to five for now. Yeah. And this is on the flat voicing. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
that the flat voicing sounds, well, I think that uh, it sounds a little bit muddy to me. It doesn't have enough high end. So I'm going to switch over to the second voicing, which is the bell-like voicing. See if that improves things. All right. Voicing, which is voice two. Voice one just sounds a little bit muddy to me, even though it's it's flat, I know, but yeah, it just sounds a little bit too muddy to me, so I like the voice two, the bell-like voicing. Um, and yeah, that's with the reverb turned um, up to nine o'clock, I can dial up the reverb a bit. So if it's five, I think it's a little bit much, right? If you guys really want to hear lots of reverb, I can dial it up even more. <laughs> wow, that's a lot. Sounds almost like a delay here. Reverb, I'll just dial it down to maybe about uh, 10. That's better. So, yeah, keep in mind the uh, yeah, the MV50 didn't have any built in reverb or any built in effects, but uh, yeah, this one's built in reverb, alright. It's not exactly tube driven spring reverb like on my Sword of Tom Jr., but. I remember um, I use uh, reverb pedals, and I think a lot of guitarists use reverb pedals. Um, of course, built-in spring reverb is always nice on an amp, but I think a lot of guitarists also use reverb pedals, and uh, yeah, to get their reverb tone, and that's essentially solid state, right? All the pedals are usually solid state. Um, there's a few tube-powered pedals, but those are those are like the more expensive ones. The vast majority of guitar pedals are solid state. So that means the vast majority of reverb pedals are also solid state. And there's been some fantastic reverb pedals out there. A lot of people use Strymon, right? For example, Strymon makes some great reverb pedals. That's all solid state. That's digital effects, actually. It's not even analog. It's digital effects. That's a funny thing, right? People say, like, they say bad things about digital effects and solid state effects, but Strymon is one of the most popular guitar pedal makers, and they're all solid state digital. Switch over to voice three, see uh, what difference that makes. Um, so yeah, voice three. Check that one out. It doesn't 
seem to be as big of a difference between voice two and three. I think voice three is like more full body, I guess. But voice three seems to be more full bodied, um, has a bit more bass, uh, whereas voice two seems to be uh, just more like yeah, more high end, like sparkly high end. Voice three has that, but also adds in some bass too, so it's more full body sounding. I think voice three is my favorite so far. Voice two is also pretty good, but uh, voice three is my favorite so far. I think. And I don't like voice one at all. <laughs> so yeah, uh, voice one, the flat one, I don't really like it much at all. It doesn't really have much character to it, and uh, just sounds like I have a blanket over my amp. Voice two um, takes off that blanket and has more high end, so I really like that. The voice three just sounds like it has more character and full bodied. So I think voice three is my favorite so far, out of the three. Okay, interesting. Um, so let's do this. I can power on my MV50 as well. So we can kind of switch between the two. So first, we'll just play the same riff on all three of... Actually, yeah, let's just play the same riff. Um, I'm going to play the same riff on my MV50 Boutique, and then I'm going to switch over to Voice 1, Voice 2, and Voice 3 on the Quilter. So you can kind of directly compare using all three of my pickup positions. That's the Vox MV50 Boutique. We'll switch over to the quilter now. Um, yeah, do that here. Okay. So this is, uh, let's use voice one first. Okay, voice one. too muddy for me. Um, I'm going to switch over to voice two. All right, voice two.
add some more highs back in. Like voice one sounds a bit too muddy. And then voice two adds some more highs back in, but it sounds a little bit thin. Um, now let's try uh, voice three, which uh, is more full bodied, I think. This is your uh, voice, voice th three. Because um, I think voice one, it's just, yeah, it's it's uh, very dark sounding and uh, yeah, it just sounds kind of muddy to me. Uh, that's the flat voicing. And then voice two, that bell voicing is a little bit too thin sounding. I mean, it adds the highs back in, which is good, but then it sounds a little bit too thin, doesn't have enough bottom end. And then voice three just kind of has the best of both. It has the bottom end of the uh, of the flat voicing, but it has the, the, the chime of the second voicing. So it's more full-bodied sounding and it has more character. So I like voice three the best. I'm gonna keep it on voice three. All right, so we've only heard the clean channel so far with no gain, basically. We can uh, dial up the gain on the clean channel so you guys can hear the gain on the clean channel. The clean channel can definitely get some grip to it. So this is going for the gain at five right now. Yeah, we can also dial it up. Let's dial it up to full and see what happens. tried the overdrive channel yet, but that was a clean channel with the gain turned up. You can definitely get some um, um, louder, not necessarily high gain, but definitely you can get some gain on that clean. Just to add a little bit of hair on your notes, I think. Alright, so now I'm going to try out the overdrive channel. So we're going to switch the channels by pressing this button here. Alright, uh, and now we're in the overdrive channel. You can put the limiter to 5 and the output to 5 and the the gain, actually let's start with the gain lower first, crank it up later. So this is the overdrive channel here. Doesn't seem like it's too overdriven, that's because of the gain down, but uh, I mean just for comparison, so this is a clean channel again. channel on. Turn up the output a little bit on that. Maybe because I have the limiter on, that's why. It's a little bit louder now. Okay, I can turn up the gain on the overdrive and put it up to five. There we go, now we've got the get more gain on this one.
so that's the overdrive channel. Uh, we can turn up the gain on it and see what we get. <laughs> here with the quilter on the overdrive channel and uh, for everything on kind of like five here gain at five the limiter at five and the uh, output at five here and I'll put the output a little bit more the overdrive channel actually isn't that loud and the gain does not go that high actually which is a little bit disappointing um, so yeah it's not very high gain so just keep that in mind guys like the overdrive channel on the quilter um, overdrive <laughs> uh, 202 it doesn't go very high gain like definitely uh, the overdrive channel has more gain on tap than the clean channel does but um, yeah for some reason I can't turn it up too high otherwise it makes this hissing noise and also the, the amount of gain on tap is just not that much um, it seems to be like mostly high, a very high headroom guitar amp so I would recommend if you guys want to have even more gain I would recommend putting a pedal in front of this, like an overdrive, a distortion pedal, or preamp pedal in front of this amp uh, to overdrive it even more. Because it seems like this guitar amp has a lot of clean headroom. Even on the overdrive channel, it has a lot of headroom. So um, I would just probably use an overdrive or distortion pedal in order to, to amp up the gain more. Because the amount of gain that it has on tap is not that much. It just seems to have a lot of, um, a lot of clean headroom. So, it seems like it's a good pedal platform amp though. So this is the overdrive channel, but even the overdrive channel, like, this is pretty, pretty clean. It's not that dirty for an overdrive channel, right? Yeah, this is not that dirty for an overdrive channel. I have the gain set to, to five here, which is like, this should be like a, you know, middle, right? Five out of 10. I should hear more gain than this. Yeah, I guess this amp just has a lot of clean headroom. So uh, I would say if you're going to use it for high gain applications, definitely put a pedal in front of it. Anyways, I'm going to do uh, another jam using the same jam track.
right, yep, so just a bit of jamming. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty much that's the overdrive channel. Uh, the thing is, there's uh, more reverb on the clean channel, looks like. Yeah, the thing is, um, I have to say I'm a little bit disappointed with this amp because the clean channel, first of all, I don't like the first two voicings. Only the third voicing uh, is, is kind of cool for me. But yeah, I mean, the first voicing is, yeah, it sounds a little bit muddy for me. The second voicing sounds a bit thin. The third voicing is full bodied, so that's the one I usually play on. Uh, but even then, I just feel like, yeah, this is something, uh, something I don't really like dig about this amp. It's just, it seems like it's uh, got, it's a pretty good clean, you know, pedal platform type of amp, right? It has a lot of headroom, 200 watts. That's pretty good for uh, for headroom. Um, but just, yeah, it doesn't sound that exciting to me. Um, doesn't seem to have much character to it. I think that that's the issue. Um, it's hard to explain, but the clean. Uh, channel of this amp, yeah, I only like the third voicing, and uh, the reverb is okay, but it's not like really impressive or anything, um, and yeah, it sounds good, but it's not like, I don't know, just kind of missing some character for me, that's it, um, just doesn't sound as good as I want it to, I don't know, like... It's just, um, maybe I've been spoiled by all the boutique tube amps I've owned before, like the Milkman, Walmart Plus, and the Swore Atomic Jr., but yeah, it just doesn't sound all as great as I was expecting. Um, and the overdrive channel's even more disappointing because it's not really that high gain. It just sounds like, it actually just sounds like the clean channel with a little bit more dirt, but that's really it. I mean, you can turn up the gain on the clean channel, right? You turn up the gain on the clean channel, it sounds a little bit dirty. It's got a little bit of hair on the notes. You turn it over to the overdrive channel, and it's almost like just a continuation of that gain on the clean channel. It's just like, okay, so you got a little bit even more uh, gain, and you got more even more hair on the notes, but it's still not like super high gain or anything. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe I was expecting too much. I was expecting the overdrive channel to be really like, you know, like a Marshall amp or something like that, and it's not. Uh, it's not that high gain, it's not a Mesa Boogie, it's not a Marshall, um, so it's not like that type of amp. But the overdrive channel doesn't really sound very high gain to me, and if I ch turn it up too much, there's this hissing noise that comes from the amp, and I don't know why. Um, so yeah, I don't know, overall it's a little bit of a disappointment for 700 bucks. I mean, this Vox MV50 Boutique, um, honestly, I think it sounds better than, than either of the channels on the Quilter, at least to me. To me. Um, I just play on the on the MV50 Boutique again, but uh, yeah, like this is 250 bucks. I don't think the Quilter necessarily sounds better than this. Yeah, this sounds like a bit more natural to me. Um, just gonna put up the, push things up a little bit and... This sounds more like natural to me, I guess. Um, more, this sounds more warmer and natural, maybe because the session actually does have a tube in it, um, albeit a Korg new tube. But uh, I don't know. I think that the Vox MV50 Boutique, to my ears, um, sounds more natural, more organic. Um, I like the clean tone on this better, actually. The Quilter has a lot of headroom, so it's a great like pedal platform type of amp. But if you don't have pedals, it just sounds honestly a little bit bland. Um, the clean channel sounds bland to me. 
the overdrive channel just sounds like the clean channel with a, like a little bit more gain, a little bit more hair on the notes, but honestly it doesn't sound that different than the clean channel. So it's honestly kind of a disappointment for 700 bucks. Yeah, like the Vox MV50, which is $250, this one sounds more natural and organic to me. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, like I turn up the gain on this amp, it actually does sound like it has more gain on tap, right? So, uh, and you guys have heard me turn up the gain on this amp. It sounds like it actually has more gain on tap than the overdrive channel on the quilter amp. So, yeah, um, and the clean channel sounds better when I rolled back down the gain. So, yeah, so the, the cleans on the Vox MV50 Boutique sound better than the quilter does on the clean channel. If I turn up the gain on this thing, it sounds better than the gain than the overdrive channel on this. So, like, yeah, like this is clean channel, right? Like this sounds better than the clean channel, honestly. It doesn't have the built-in reverb, but I think the Vox MV50 uh, sounds better on the cleans. And if I turn up the gains, like this, yeah, this, this has more gain on tap than the overdrive channel of the quilter, like, to my ears. So, I don't know, man. <laughs> this little amp, man, like, yeah, turn, you dial back down the gain, it sounds better than the clean channel on the quilter, and you dial up the gain, it sounds better than the overdrive channel on the quilter, and this costs less. It's a smaller amp, it costs less money. So, I don't know, I'm a little bit uh, disappointed on it by the Quilter Labs, honestly. From all the praise that it gets online, I would think it sounds better, but it sounds pretty bland, uh, honestly. So yeah, that's disappointing. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you guys want to hear this again, I'll, I'll go back to the Quilter amp, but... Pretty sure it's not just my ears. Uh, let me try it again. So this is... This is the clean channel, right? Other than the reverb and the higher headroom, I don't think it sounds better. It sounds more bland than the Vox does. And it would turn on the overdrive channel. Oh man, it sounds a little bit harsh to my ears, actually, the highs. If I turn up the gain. sound that good um yeah so unfortunately a bit of a disappointment uh yeah the clean channel on the quilter laps other than like it, it has the, it has like more headroom than the vox obviously because this is 200 watts um and it has a reverb a built-in reverb but other than that it sounds more bland compared to the vox mv50 boutique and the overdrive channel on this doesn't sound better than the overdrive on the Vox MB50. <laughs> and this is a single channel amp. This is two this is two channels, right? Except I think it's the the thing is they made the overdrive channel on the quilter sound very similar to the clean channel on the quilter. Like it just sounds like it has a bit more hair on the notes and like a little bit more gain range, but that's really about it. It it honestly sounds pretty bland to me. So I don't know. I don't know what, what's going on, but uh, maybe it just doesn't work well with this with this cabinet. Like, I want to use it with a Vox BC08 cabinet, but uh, it's not working well so far. Alright, just for another point of reference, I brought out my Swart Atomic Junior. Now, this is a real tube amp. It's got a full set of tubes here. Um, one preamp tube, one power tube, one rectifier tube. So yeah, the Swart Atomic Junior is a 5 watt Class A full tube amp. Uh, it's got one 12x7 preamp tube, one 6v6 power tube, one 5y3 rectifier tube. So you have full set of tubes there. Um, and yeah, this sounds very organic, very warm and natural as you expect a tube amp to sound. Uh, it's got very organic overdrive as you turn up the volume and naturally the tubes start to, uh, to be overdriven. And uh, has really nice uh, spring reverb as well since it's a, it's a full uh, tube powered spring reverb inside of here. So. Yeah, um, I think this is a much better sounding amp compared to the other two. Of course, it also costs more. It's a thousand dollar tube amp, and the other ones are, of course, cheaper. And yeah, this has a, a full spring tank inside of it, a real spring reverb tank. And, uh, and yeah, not no, no new tubes inside of this. This is actual vacuum tubes. And uh, just to show you guys the difference, 
Um, so we're going to plug into this one now. This is a real tube amp here. Um, this Ford Atomic Junior, it's five watts of full class A tube power. Uh, it's built in real spring reverb here. Um, yeah, uh, what can I say? This, this just sounds way more natural and organic to me. Junior, so you guys can hear even more about the differences. So. Yeah, so, um, yeah, this, this just sounds way better. Um, 
my opinion, just to my ears, um, the Swar Atomic Jr., this is like a full Class A tube amp. It's a real tube, tube amp using vacuum tubes. And uh, it just sounds more warmer, organic, natural to me. The clean tone and the overdriven tone of this amp just sounds way more natural and organic. Um, the Vox MV50, it's, it actually comes pretty close. Um, I'm pretty impressed with the Vox MV50, especially for $250. This is pretty good. Um, yeah, like the, I mean, the clean tones is pretty nice. And also you can turn up the gain and uh, it actually has some gain on tap. So for 250 bucks, I'm pretty impressed with the Vox MV50. I already did a video comparing these two, by the way. Um, but then the Quilter Labs, which I really want to, I really wanted to um, to show it, you know, like demo this today. Um, and I was hoping that it would be pretty good. But yeah, the Overdrive 202, like it's $700. And I've been hearing so many good things about this online. And unfortunately, I'm just disappointed because... Yeah, just in my opinion, the clean channel on here uh, just sounds very bland. Um, honestly, to me, it's basically unusable on the first two voices because voice one is basically unusable because it's uh, it sounds like I have a blanket over my amp, it's just way too dark. And then voice two, a little, it's just too thin sounding. I mean, sure, it improves the highs and everything, it has more clarity than the first voice, but yeah, it, it's it doesn't have enough bottom end. Um, and then the third voicing is actually usable. Um, so this one is, is pretty full bodied and um, I really, I think the, the third voice is fine. Um, but then the clean channel itself, even on the third voice, just sounds pretty bland to me. So has a lot of high headroom and then the reverb is decent. Um, not as good as the reverb on the Swart. Uh, but yeah, it just sounds kind of bland to me. I don't think it even sounds better than the Vox MV50, much less the Swart Tom Jr. Um, and then you turn over to the overdrive channel. Well, the overdrive channel doesn't really have that much overdrive on top. It doesn't have that much distortion. I was hoping that there would be more gain. It does have more gain, but it, yeah, it still stays relatively clean. Like, it's almost like it's just an extension of the clean channel. So it still still stays relatively clean. And yeah, that makes it great for, as a pedal platform amp. But if I'm looking for something that, you know, overdrives my tone, then yeah, I, I think I need another pedal or something in front of this amp. Because otherwise, I don't think I'm going to get enough gain out of it. And plus, it starts hissing whenever I turn up the gain too loudly. So, I don't know. The, the overdrive channel is really a disappointment. It just sounds like it just sounds like the clean channel, but, you know, turning up the gain more on the clean channel, basically. So, yeah. It doesn't even sound close. Not even to the MB50. I think the MB50 sounds better when I turn up the gain on this compared to the overdrive channel here. And the Sword Tom Jr., of course, is natural tube overdrive. So, of course, it doesn't sound as good as that. So yeah, um, it's really unfortunate. I'm really disappointed with the quilter. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe it just doesn't match well with the cabinet, but this Sword Atomic Jr. is also using an 8-inch speaker. So um, just to keep it fair, right? This Vox BC-108 was using an 8-inch speaker. This is also using an 8-inch speaker. So it's not like it has any advantages in terms of, of size or anything. Um, but yeah, um, I think the Sword Atomic Jr., the, the, this is a full you know, tube amp. This sounds the best still. Uh, but the Vox MV50, this costs a thousand, a thousand four hundred dollars brand new. So this is the most expensive. So um, yeah, you are getting what you pay for. Uh, but the Vox MV50, this is pretty good bang for the buck, honestly. It sounds really good, especially for the size and for how cheap it is. It's only two hundred fifty dollars, and this small little head here is, uh, yeah, it's very impressive. You can get a lot of good usable tones out of this one. Quilter is just disappointing. This is, it's bigger, it's heavier than the Vox. Um, has two channels, um, yeah, more expensive. It just doesn't sound as good on either channel. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, I was hoping to do like a good demonstration of the Quilter Labs, um, but yeah, unfortunately, I don't think that uh, it's very. It's, maybe it's not for me. I don't know. It just doesn't sound as good. <laughs> I mean, it just sounds. Maybe solid state technology still has a way to go or something. I don't know. It just doesn't sound as good to me as the Vox or the Sword Atomic Junior. So. Yeah, maybe just solid state technology still has a way to go because uh, the Vox MV50, this one does have a new tube inside of it. And the Sword, of, of course, this one has a 6v6 tube inside of it. This one is full solid state. Um, doesn't, just sounds bland. So, yeah, not enough character on the clean channel. Sounds pretty bland to me. Overdrive channel is just an extension of the clean channel. Not enough gain on tap. Yeah, honestly, the only thing that the Quilter does better than these two is uh, have more clean headroom. That's really about it. It's a 200 watt amp, so uh, it has more clean headroom on tap. Uh, but that's about it. Uh, even the built-in reverb is not that impressive. Um, definitely doesn't sound like a natural full spring reverb like this Swart has. 
Um, yeah, like to me, it doesn't, it doesn't sound the same as a real spring tank. Um, but yeah, it just has more clean headroom. I think that's the only advantage that the Quilter Labs has for me, um, unfortunately. Yeah, um, but anyways, the Quilter Overdrive 202. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. Um, if you guys have owned a Quilter, or if you guys have heard one in real life, maybe you guys might, might have liked it better than me, or maybe I'm using it wrong, I don't know. Uh, try to put all the settings up to to the five, because that's how I usually, you know, I just leave things in the middle. So maybe I'm supposed to mess around more with the settings or something. I don't know. It just doesn't sound very good to me. Um, well, not as good as it, you know, as uh, people have said anyways. So that's it, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Yep. And that's always. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for uh, more of my videos.